Oh, welcome back Raider Nation, the Raider Ross Report. This is Raider Sparks uh, coming out with another video. Just kind of my thoughts on the first round of the of the NFL Draft. I thought it was a, a fun night, um, solid for the Raiders. Um, definitely didn't see that coming with Brock Bowers, but we'll get into that here in a minute. We'll just, uh, I just want to recap the whole round, kind of give you my thoughts and opinions on some of the picks and that type of thing. So, as you know, I put out a video yesterday of a mock draft. I was just kind of having a little fun with the mock draft I did. Uh, but hit a couple couple of the picks. Um, it's really impossible to predict. Just more of a fun exercise. And uh, I couldn't do trades, so when I did it, I um, I just kind of went with the position I thought. And I thought some teams, I think there'd be more trade backs, I guess, uh, for some of these quarterbacks and some mo more movement than there actually was. So just kind of had a little fun with it. So let's uh, start out with Chicago. Obviously, Caleb, uh, we all knew that was coming, so that was no no surprise there. And then I, I obviously, you know, I'm not a huge fan of Jaden Daniels. I had him falling out of the first round because, uh, one, I thought I had a little fun with it, uh, with the Levis uh, thing. But two, um, I think the writing was on the wall that he was going to the commanders. I had Drake May there because I think he's a better quarterback. But, um, but, yeah, I think the Raiders dodged a bullet on that one. We didn't have to have uh, Jaden Daniels. And so I think Washington will be picking in the next, uh, in the top ten for the next several years with that with that decision. So we'll see. And then, of course, uh, New England got lucky, right? They were able to get Drake May. Uh, I had him going with J.J. McCarthy just because I had him over Jaden Daniels. I, I thought Drake May might have a shot to go second. So, um, But anyways, the positions are all right, right? The first three were all quarterbacks, which makes sense. Uh, and then Air, Arizona, I had Marvin Harrison, obviously. That was the easy pick to make. Uh, the Chargers, uh, I thought they would trade down. Uh, I put them with uh, Marius Mims. Uh, obviously, they took Joe Alt, so they did get the tackle, um, which made a lot of sense. I think if I was just going chalk, I, that would have been the pick anyways. It was pretty obvious pick for them, but I, I really felt like they might be a team that might might trade down, but that didn't happen, obviously. And then the Giants with Malik Neighbors, that's a solid pick. They needed to get receiver help in there for Daniel Jones, so that was that was smart. And then Tennessee, I think everybody knew they were taking a tackle. I had Joel Alt just because I didn't have him going uh, to the Chargers, and I thought I thought he was going to be the first tackle off the uh, off the board. But the Chargers uh, opted to take him at five and not not trade the pick, and so they got J.C. Latham, which uh, I know the NFL was much higher than I am. I think as a Raider fan, we have fatigue with, with Leatherwood on offensive tackles. So, you know, obviously they saw the power in Latham and the athleticism. I'm just concerned with his weight. You know, he had to really drop weight. He plays like a 360, and I, I don't know um, how sustainable that's going to be, what his work, work ethic he is. But I guess he uh, showed Tennessee that he's got a strong work ethic and will keep some of the weight down and, and still remain athletic. And then obviously the Falcons um, – that's a head scratcher. I thought they were going to take Terry on Arnold. I, I he dropped way further. Than I thought he was going to drop. Um, taking my, Michael Penix honestly makes no sense at all. I mean, I haven't really seen too much analysis of anybody that's really made any sense of it. Really, I mean, some people have tried, but still, it doesn't really compute. Um, and the Bears' next pick, uh, I thought they were going to go edge. You know, I, I really thought they'd go quarterback edge, kind of. Uh, model their their draft after the Texans but they chose to get Roma Dunze uh which still is a solid pick I, it's, it's a smart pick for them I, I like that pick and the Jets I thought the Jets would end up with a Dunze for Rodgers but they went with the tackle so that makes a lot of sense too with Ole Foschino you got to protect Aaron Rodgers so that that pick actually makes a lot of sense um and then the Vikings, I really thought the Vikings would end up with Penix. I thought he was a perfect match for them with the deep ball that he throws with Justin Jefferson. But obviously the Falcons uh, um, made that impossible. So they went ahead and traded up one spot for McCarthy, which makes a lot of sense too. They, they needed a quarterback. They had to get a quarterback. So, And that was the one that was left. Um, and then the, the Broncos with Bo Nix, you know, obviously everybody had that one too. So that was a pretty pretty easy one to predict. And then the unpredictable, right? Uh, the Raiders, I really thought we were going to go with a tackle. I had Troy Fontenot from Washington. Uh, but all the every all the guys on the TV, you know, all the analysis was, you know, Fuaga and, and Arnold and Quinnell Mitchell and these guys. And uh, they surprised everybody with taking Brock Bowers, uh, which is a great pick. I'm not mad at that at all. He is the best player available. And, uh, you know, I was big on them getting a receiver. You know, a lot of my mocks, I'd have either Brian Thomas in the first round or Jalen Polk in the second or Ricky Pearsall in the third, who surprisingly went in the first. Um, 
but to get a play, they needed a playmaker. They had to get another receiver, and and essentially that's what they got. They got a true playmaker who can play anywhere on the offense, like receiver, slot, running back, tight end, whatever you need them to do. And and we're obviously going to go heavy on tight end sets, so two tight end sets. So I think it's a great pick. You know, I, I liked it. The Colts, I had them taking Quinion Mitchell, uh, but they went with the first edge rusher and got Latu at uh, 15. So. Yeah, you know, I guess that makes a lot of sense. Um, I thought, I thought Turner would probably be the first edge, but hey, they they changed it up a little bit and they went law too. And then uh, Seattle um, with Byron Murphy, I thought they were going to get an offensive lineman. I didn't get Graham Barton, but they uh, they changed it up a little bit there too. The Jaguars, uh, I had them taking uh, a Talisi Fulaga, um, but obviously, um, you know, they went with Brian Thomas Jr. So that that's fine, um, no problem with that. Wait, where did Fogger go? Oh, the Saints. Oh yeah, so the Saints, I had them taking Oli Foshno, uh, but they ended up getting Fogger. So we had the the right uh, the the tackle position, but they just went with the the right tackle. I think obviously Oli was uh, was gone by then, so they couldn't couldn't get him. So that that kind of makes a lot of sense. That pick, um, I'm not mad at the Seattle pick with Byron Murphy either. Um, and then uh, Jaguars with Brian Thomas. I thought they were going to get a tackle, but that didn't happen. Uh, the Bengals, I had them getting J.C. Latham, uh, the tackle, but they went with Mims. So that makes a lot of sense. They like the bigger tackles and, and the athletic and all that. And then the Rams, I thought they were going to get Law too, um, but he was already gone. So they, they went ahead and took Verse, which, uh, you know, that, that makes sense. They needed an edge rusher, so that makes a lot of sense. Uh, the Steelers, I thought they were going to get Zach Frazier. I thought they were going to get their center. Uh, but they wanted Troy Fontenot, so they can he can play inside, outside, in, interior, or or tackle position. So that that actually makes a lot of sense too. Um, Miami, I thought they were going to get a center. They went to edge Chop Robinson, which I'm not sure I agree with that, but um, they went ahead and uh, pulled the trigger on Chop Robinson. I, that's surprising to me. Um, then the Eagles, <laughs> I thought the Eagles were getting Brock Bowers, but the Raiders changed that up, and so they they went ahead and got Quinion Mitchell, which. Everybody was talking about them trading up to get Quinn Young. They sat sat pat and they got their guy, which is smart. Um, the Vikings, they went ahead and got, I thought they were going to get an interior. Uh, I had them getting Johnny Newton, but they ended up uh, trading up a little bit and getting um, Dallas Turner. So there you go. I think they did. They, they needed defensive line help. I just thought they were going to uh, attack the interior, but they didn't. The Cowboys, I had them taking Tyler Guyton, and that's obviously who they took. Uh, Green Bay, I thought they were going to go with a defensive back. I am getting Nate Wiggins. Uh, they changed it up and they went ahead and got Jordan Morgan, uh, the offensive tackle. So a little different, little different strategy there. Uh, Tampa Bay, I thought they were going to get uh, Jared Verse, right? <laughs> I thought they were going to get their edge guy, but they didn't. They went ahead and got Graham Barton, uh, and they did need offensive help, so offensive line help. So that makes a lot of sense. He's a great player. Uh, and then Arizona, uh, I had them getting Byron Murphy. Uh, once he, Byron Murphy was gone, I thought they would take Johnny Newton, but they took Darius Robinson, which uh, I guess he gets a little bit more versatility because he can play edge and, and he can play tackle. So he's kind of a little bit like Tyree, just a little bit bigger version of Tyree. Um, so not a bad pick. He got, got their defensive line help. Uh, obviously, the Bills made a surprising trade, trade all the way out. That, that must have been more financial. It must be a big difference between a first-round pick and, a, and an early second-round pick. It's probably a couple million dollars different. So I think that was more financial than anything. Um, you know, the Lions going ahead and getting Terry on Arnold. I had him getting Cooley McKintree, so, but uh, Arnold was still there. I, I think they were probably really surprised by, the, by that when they were able to pick him. Uh, the Ravens, I had him getting a receiver. Um, but they ended up getting Nate Wiggins. So I, I thought they were going to get receiver help uh, for Jackson, but they didn't. I had, I had him taking A.D. Mitchell. Uh, the 49ers, I thought they were going to go offensive tackle with Kingsley Sun and Matea. But they really, that was a surprising pick, Ricky Pierce. So I didn't think he'd go that soon at all. I, I was thinking late uh, er, um, late second, early third. I actually had the Raiders taking him in the third round. So uh, that, that was a bit of a surprise. And then Kansas City, uh, I had him with Xavier Worthy, and that's exactly what they did. And then Carolina bumped up and got Leggett, which was smart. They need receiver help for um, for Bryce Young. So, anyways, um, yeah, definitely, definitely don't mind the Raiders' pick. I, I, I 
thought they would get a receiver. I didn't know it was going to come in the form of a tight end, but let's let's be real. Bowers is a receiver, running back, a tight end. He's whatever you want him to be, and he's he's a beast, man. He's four five at two forty three. A uh, 40 inch vertical. I mean, just an explosive athlete, power runner. Uh, he had carries in the backfield too. So real, really good deal. So it was a fun first round. Definitely. And looking forward to the second and third rounds today. Hopefully you guys are too. Uh, hopefully the Raiders continue to bring in playmakers um, and difference makers here on the team. And um, anyways, that's all I got. That's my quick recap of the first round. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, share, subscribe, and I'll uh, catch you on the next one. Thanks a lot.